Okay. That's... And then, then we will talk about making sense of the matter. Once the coffee is poured and the tip of the cigarette is lit and placed in the ashtray. It's one of uh, your first uh, short movies uh -huh. that allowed you to like uh, be known by people in cinema. Mm -hmm. So how did you come with this idea with uh, this uh, first short movie? I think I was just, I can remember just like fucking, fucking experimenting and, you know, tr practicing writing. And the easiest way to practice writing was just have two people sitting in a coffee shop talking to each other across the table because it was, it was easy. It wasn't, nobody was doing anything except talking. So yeah, I was just, I don't know, trying to learn how to write. Thank you. Science of the land. It's just a scratch. Dr. Lecter, whose head is in that bottle? Why don't you ask me about Buffalo Bill? That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, so. obviously, Sounds of the Lambs, great movie. I was thinking about the idea that they had to put him in a, a glass instead of prison bars because they knew they had all these scenes between Jodie Foster and between Cl Clarice Starling and Hannibal Lecter that if they had to shoot through these bars, that would be irritating. So they came up with this brilliant idea of having this kind of like glass. They're not doing it here, but one thing they do, he does so well in that movie is um, having people talk into the camera. Now then, tell me, what did Miggs say to you? There's two things. I think there's the stories that he tells I really like. I like the characters. He's got really good girls. But visually, they just speak to me. The way he frames the shots, the, the music that he uses. It's a long list of things that I love about his work. There's always, there's always about 25 or 30 times when I'm making a movie where I stop and I just ask myself, well, how would Jonathan Demme do it? You know, I try and do it like that. Let's watch this one. How come? The Royal Hawaiian. This is worth watching. This is nice. <laughs> Shelley Duvall singing He Needs Me. Oh, who wouldn't want to be there on the beach? Lovely. I think I did that once to somebody. I think I, I, I extended my hand sometime and they gave me a big hug and I, I, think, I think that, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? It's nice. That, that kind of holds up. Well, it's all kind of meant to be like a feeling a little bit like those um, Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger movies, you know? That kind of musical thing, mm. kind of classic. Like Top Hat. Yeah, Top Hat and Carefree and... Yeah, so that's kind of, I think, a little bit of the style there of what's going on with this. So, what's the beef here exactly? It doesn't have much to do with your specialty, which I understand is marine law. We got plenty of crime on the high seas, Lieutenant. Okay, well, so far we have murder and kidnapping. And kidnapping. We, can work, you know, we can work in pirates if it would make you more comfortable. Either way, it's high profile. Yeah, but um, given your history of harassment with my client, this will never make it to trial. Yeah, it's funny when you watch something like this. You, you enjoy it. But why did you choose to so, adapt uh, Thomas Pynchon's book? Um, I like the book. Um, great characters. Great venue. Um, good opportunity for a lot of different actors to do things. Benicio Del Toro, Josh Brolin. Did you have some actors in mind when you started working? Benicio, as I had in mind from the beginning, actually, uh, and Josh Brolin. Oh, yeah, a lot, lot of, uh, you know, like, dream situation, like Jenna Malone, um, somebody that I wanted to work with. Yeah, great opportunity to be able to. And is there a difference between adapting a book than having you on script? Yeah, it's, it's, there, um, it's 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 different for a while, but ultimately it all kind of ends up being the same. You know, you're just sort of struggling, trying to get something good.